Hi everyone and welcome to the channel. In our previous video, we took a quick look at CAD Sketcher and how it works with our Solver Space tools here. We looked at a few constraints in there. In this video, we're gonna create something like this, this simple bracket. We're gonna understand how to create sketches, constrain them, add modifiers to so say remove these holes and sketch upon multiple surfaces. We're going to then go back and use the stack to modify parts of these features to allow for some parametric capabilities in there. So I hope you enjoy these videos. Let's have a look at how we would do this. So we're in Blender, we started a new document and I'm gonna select the middle cube and hit delete. We bring out the CAD Sketcher tools by coming over to the sidebar accessible from this arrow here and bring them out and select Sketcher and add a sketch. We're creating this sketch along this plane here. And this will be the X, Z plane. So I click on that. When I start sketching, let's place a box. You see that the box appears going upwards. We click and we drop the box. If I click again, then we start sketching another box. So we need to actually bring the view around this way so we can see what we're doing. So we've got those there. Now let's get rid of these boxes. If we right click, watch what happens on the left hand side here. Right click and we get back to this tool here. Solve space select. So this allows you to select geometry by clicking and dragging or selecting the size of the geometry. If I click and drag around this rectangle and hit delete, then that's removed. This center point is geometry as well, and that can be removed. So we don't really want to remove that. If we accidentally do remove it, let's say we highlighted all of that and hit delete, then we can add that back in. And that's a 2D point. And we click on that and just click somewhere to add the 2D point. It's obviously not in the right place at the moment. Remember, right click to get the pointer back to Silver Space Select and select this point. If we right click now and then come down to fixed, this point cannot be moved. Trouble is it's not in the right place. Right click on it and come into the X and set that to zero. And also we need to do the Y, but we can't actually select that at the moment. So, so hit enter. You can see it's moved. Right click on it again and set the Y to zero and hit enter. So that now is in the center. That's add some geometry. So we're looking to create a basic bracket. So I'm going to use the line tool and this really is a polyline. So what will happen if I click on that, when we start drawing, we get these constraints kicking. So you can see this line going down. This is a constraint and we've got horizontal, vertical, horizontal, etc. Then we can't add a constraint in here, or vertical, horizontal, because, well, it doesn't allow it at this point. And you see on the right hand side here, we've got this continuous draw. So that means if I click, we can continuously draw a 2D object with this. If this was off, and well, if we try to click over here, you can see what's happened. I've just dropped it down there. And let's right click, cancel that and go back into the tool. I can take continuous draw off. Now, when I click once and then click again, we get a single line like so. So it's worth having a go at these just to understand how they work. Let's right click to cancel that and highlight all of them wherever that's touched, that box, so you can see that box there, will highlight the geometry that's gonna delete. Remember, miss the center one, otherwise we'll have to re-add it and hit delete. And do the same for this one, and hit delete. So we're gonna create an L-shaped profile for this. With the line tool, make sure the continuous draw is selected. And what we're going to do is create a line from the top coming down, connecting up to this point here. I'll hover over it, you can see it's highlighted. Click once, 
that shifts into place. And we'll click on that point and come out here. And our continuous draw is on. You notice that the continuous draw stopped when we selected this point here. So what we would have to do is click that point again and create another line. This is really just closing the geometry. Blender thinks we're closing the geometry and you'll see this when we come up to the top point here as well. So I've got to move my viewpoint, hold down the shift, middle mouse button and drag this into position or use the hand here. We can use this hand, but if we click on that hand, what happens? Well, we get this line in place. So what I'm going to do is right click, click on that line and hit delete and go back into the line tool. You can use the shortcuts if you want. Hover over this point, click, we're going to come up, see the constraints kicked in, click once, come across, click up again, click. Now watch what happens when I come across and come into this point. When I move near to it, it snaps onto that point there. And what will happen, it will snap onto that point. It will close the geometry and our continuous draw has stopped. And if I try to draw again, well, the tool's still selected because I haven't right clicked to cancel the tool. Right click to cancel the tool. And what we need to do is right click again to get this tool here. Right click, you can see that tool's come back. On the right hand side, you can see all the options that have appeared and this is on this active tool and workspace settings option here, this tab here. So we've got our geometry in place. And let's click on Y axis. This will flip it over, click it again. It'll flip it around the other side. So this is nice and flat now. We're going to start adding constraints in. To do that, I'm going to come over to the right hand side and click on tools. Not constraints, because these are the constraints that have been added. So you can see all those constraints have been added into this list. We can leave that open for the time being. Let's click on tools. So we've got all the constraints here. Let's add some equality constraints. To do that, make sure nothing's selected. Click on the blank space. Click the equals. I always find it's better to actually select the constraint in Blender. With Blender, it gives you some hints down the bottom here. So it's asking you to pick the entity to constraint and what type they are. So we pick one and then pick the next one. It only does two at a time. So we've got those equality in there. That's use the equality again. And we'll use these two to keep those the same. Now let's have a look to see what we've got. So we can see those are all working in there. And we've got the constraints working for us there. So we can start adding some lengths in here. So this length here, I'm going to set with a distance. So we click on the arrow itself. Don't click on here because if we try that, nothing's going to happen. So click on the arrow and we come down to distance. Now, word of advice here, let's click off. If we click and click again, we're going to make that invisible. So you can see it's vanished there. So all we need to do is come into the constraints and show all, or find that constraint in our list and show it. So the best idea is to always click once. If we right click, we don't get all of the entities in here that we want. Let's click off. So you can see that right click doesn't actually allow that. So we click on it once, come into distance and set this to 20 millimeters. Hit enter. This is going to change dramatically. So you can see that there. And let's use the shift and the middle mouse button to move this into place. Now my mouse has got a wheel, which I can, which I can scroll in and out. And if I hold down the shift and click the wheel, push the wheel down, I can move it. So I can move in, I can move constraints by clicking on them on the actual arrow itself, move it down, not the text like I just did there. And we'll set a constraint in this one as well for a distance. Now this distance is going to be around about three millimeters. 
So that's come in here, click once, click on the distance, select free from the keyboard, hit enter. So we're building up the constraints and we're building up the object. We've actually finished with this sketch now. If we look at the top, we can see we still got degrees of freedom of six, but I'm not too bothered about this. We don't need fully constrained sketches. If they move, they can move, it's absolutely fine. So what I'm going to do is leave the sketch now. And you'll notice that, well, hard to see what's going on. And this is because of Blender's coloring for the background. So if we come up to the top here, we've got a number of options. We've got show overlays. Let's drop that down. And I like to take the gridding off, which makes it a lot easier to see. We've also got options over on here as well. So this shading, we drop that down. We got weld, theme, and viewport. So I click on viewport, I can change the color here. So I click on that, I can change the color of the viewport to suit what I want. So I can make this a lot lighter if I so desire. But we have to be wary, if I use a light color like that, we have to be wary when we go back into our sketch. So if I come into this sketch here and use the edit, you can see, well, we've got the colors for our constraints. They're quite hard to see now. So we just have to be aware of that. Let's go back into the viewport and amend this a bit. And I'm going to bring this down to around about there. So it's a balancing act of getting this right. Let's leave the sketch. I'm going to leave it like that. So at the moment, we've got this sketch. We need to create a mesh from this sketch. So come back into the sketch, edit it, and we've got this convert type here. Let's drop this down and come to mesh and click leave sketch. We've now got a mesh that we can add our modifiers to. Anytime we can come in and edit the sketch and change the dimensions. So let's change this one to say two millimeters and hit enter. Leave the sketch and our mesh has updated. I want to extrude this now, which is known in CAD as extrusion or padding. And I want to extrude this. Let's bring this around this way. You can see I want to just extrude this forwards or even this way, doesn't matter which way. To do that, we use a modifier. So I'm gonna hide the sketcher. So at the moment we've got sketcher open. Now to hide this, we can drag from here or hit the N key on the keyboard. That's a strew this now. Let's come into the modifiers. On the right hand side, you see a spanner or a wrench icon that sits here. Make sure the sketch is selected, add modifier, drop this down. And for extrusion, it's solidify. And that thickens the surface. And we can increase the thickness here. I want to increase this to 40 millimeters and hit enter. So you can see it's gone this way. If I wanted it to go the other way, then I change the offset from minus one to one and hit enter. This is known as the stack. So modifiers get added to the stack and we can change the modifiers on here. So now I've got holding down shift, pressing the middle mouse button and bringing this over our viewport over this way. I've got, I got this model here. Now I've got these cameras here. So the camera and light, I don't really need these. I'm going to hit delete on that one, hit delete on this one. And we've got this. 3D cursor here as well, which if I come up to this icon here, the show overlays, let's drop that down and click 3D cursor and click off, that's now gone. So we don't have to worry about the 3D cursor in our way. Also, you may want to change the perspective. Come up to view, perspective, orthographic or perspective. So if we click that and we can change between those modes. So it's looking more like a CAD program at the moment because we're using the orthographic view. You can see it up the top left here. So we're at the stage now that we want to create 
a sketch upon this surface and this one. And these are just going to be simple holes. CAD Sketch allows us to do this via something called a working plane that's added to a mesh face. So we're using our solver tools. All we need to do is select the tool, add working plane, and then we select one of the faces. So we click, left click on the face. We've actually added that to that face. Now I can add another one by clicking on say this face, but what I'm going to do is just right click to cancel and we get the plane added. We can now add a sketch to this plane. So remember it's click first, then right click. If I clicked on both of those, let's go add plane again. So I click on this one and click on this one. Let's say let's click on this one then right click. We get three working planes. So to delete them, we select them and hit delete on the keyboard. The center point, this 2D center point will stay. So we click on that, delete that, and we'll just delete the others. So just clicking on them and hitting delete. And there should be two of these. Get rid of those and delete and delete. Let's try that again. Select the add work plane to mesh. Click on one of the faces. So let's select this one and then right click to a set. We've got that plane there. We need to add a sketch to that plane. So let's come back over to our sketcher and click add sketch. If I click this plane and then click add sketch, then it's added to that plane. If I didn't, then we have to select the plane. So now if I create something, let's say a circle, we can see it's been added there. Let's just right click, highlight that. Remember we've got the center point, so make sure we highlight just circle and hit delete. So now I've got this here. Let's bring this over this way and swing this around a bit. We can't really see that because of our coloring. So if we wanted to change the coloring, then we can do so over in the viewpoint shader options, come down, let's set this to something a bit darker so we can see that in there. So we're going to sketch upon here. We've got this point here. I'm going to add two holes. So we're going to use a circle and I'm going to sketch two circles on this face. Right click to cancel the tool and we'll create some constraints going across here to keep these in line. So I'm going to use the horizontal constraint and select this point and this one to keep those horizontal. See the horizontal constraint there and do the same horizontal constraint, this one and this center point. So those are in line now. Using the quality constraint against these two, make those equal. You can see the quality constraint is in there. Bring this around this way. So you can see those there. That sets some diameter. So I'm going to set diameter of one of them because we've got these both equal. So I only need to set a diameter of one. I make this five millimeters. So we click on the arrow, click on that. Now, if we can't get the constraint, you notice that I'm clicking and well, it's not really working. So what we do is just zoom in and click on that and we can set the diameter. So I've clicked on the arrow and we'll set this to five millimeters and hit enter. So that sets the diameter across those two. I'm going to leave the sketch now. We can rename the sketch if we wanted to. You can see those in there. For this sketch here, we can set this to holes. Now come into here, the convert type, and we're going to make this mesh again. So we're doing the same, making it mesh and we'll leave the sketch. So we've got a mesh in here, which I'm going to add a modifier to. So make sure the holes is selected and come into the spanner icon or the wrench icon, add modifier. We're gonna solidify that. The thickness of these edges are three millimeters. So let's increase this. Well, it doesn't matter what we increase it to, as long as it's three or over, I'm gonna go for four, just to be on the safe side. Hit enter see where they've gone. So let's bring this around. We can see they've poked out the side there. That's good. 
what we're going to do is use a boolean against these and our main bracket so our main sketch for the bracket here matter of fact let's come in rename that sketch to bracket and leave the bracket sketch so i've got the bracket and the holes and we see those there click on the bracket i'm going to add another modifier so we've got the wrench icon already selected on our tabs add modifier and we're going to use a boolean modifier there so the boolean modifier has been selected scroll down to the bottom we can see the booleans here we need to pick the object that's going to be used against that boolean we've created the boolean on the bracket so select the eyedropper and might select the holes or we could select it from the screen there so the holes has been selected and we're not going to do an intersection we're going to do a difference so if i come up to the holes and hide that we can see we've got some holes there so now on our stack we've got solidify and a boolean that's bring these up so, and we've hidden our whole sketch so we can see in there i'm going to create a sketch upon here now so this surface here this face so we come down add work plane on mesh click on the face you want right click to accept and we're going to add Let's just go for some simple holes in here. I was going to add a slot, but we'll just go for some simple holes. Add some holes. We'll keep this simple and we repeat the process on here. But first, I've forgotten to add the sketch and select this plane. Using the circle, we add two circles. Right click to cancel. Use the equal. Select both the circles. They've got quality going across those. And then we're going to make these horizontal using the horizontal constraint. Select one, select the other, and then horizontal constraint again, select one and the other. Notice I'm not using shortcut keys. We're just going to keep this simple. Now the diameter. I can't reference in the other geometry on this side if i leave the sketch and just show the holes what you'll be able to see if we bring this round you can see the sketch that comes around here so if i edit this sketch i can't actually select that because it's not on the same plane as these so i can't actually reference back to that so that's add a diameter to this one and we need to select, let's zoom in, that constraint in there. So we need to come right in and, and bring this around the side and click on that arrow and set this to 5 mil and hit enter. So now we've got those two in there. Degrees of freedom is still two. This means that it can move on this surface in and out in both of these here. So we've got one degree of freedom and we got this one as a degree of freedom as well so two degrees of freedom here and the same with these I haven't fully constrained them down so I'm going to set a distance between these two points in here so a distance and if I wanted them centered so we can't go for the midpoint because it only works with points and lines but what we can do is have some construction geometry so I'm going to click on this line. Now I can do this straight away by clicking on construction mode in this drawing here, construction mode, and that will create construction geometry. So let's click this point. So it's not having that. So because it's hitting the equals constraint, zoom in a bit and click on that point there, shift middle mouse button, come over and snap to that center point there making sure we get that center point not the equal constraint 
if we have problems with the constraints and they get in the way, what we can do is come down to constraints and hide all. So they won't get in the way now. Let's add the midpoint constraint. So click midpoint constraint, select this center point and this line. And these are now constrained in the middle. Notice the constraint has been added. So what's happened because we've hidden all the constraints, the new ones are made visible. So at any time we can go, well, we've got too many constraints to get in the way and we just hide them. And then any new ones will become visible. I'm going to set a length against these. So right click to cancel the tool, click on that construction line and we'll come up and create a distance. And we can set distance by clicking on the arrow. And we're going to do this at 20 millimeters. So we have our sketch locked down and we've got all those in there. The construction line won't affect the geometry in any way. The minute we close out, this construction line will not be extruded, solidified or anything. It will just be these two. So that's come up and leave the sketch. So we've got this sketch now. I'm not going to bother renaming it, but I'm going to add a modifier to that sketch. But first, we need to make sure it's a mesh because as you can see, it's not available over here. So that's edit it and convert type to mesh. You notice that we've got this redundant constraints here. It's just saying about that we have redundant constraint, but this is okay. We can leave that. And now we've got a mesh. It shouldn't affect us in any way. Notice on the right hand side, the sketch is now there. We can add a modifier to the sketch because our last tab was the spanner, add modifier. And again, we want the solidifier. Thickness, say four millimeters. And that's extruded down the right way. So it's gone downwards. So you can see that there. If it was going the wrong way, then we just change the offset. Rather than minus one, we'll set this to one. And that will place it this way. So that back to minus one. Let's add another modifier and we want the boolean. So now we can collapse the solidifier. We want difference and we want to pick the object. I've selected the sketch, so I've added the modifier to this sketch. So we need to pick the other one, which is the object, the bracket. And if we hide that sketch, we can see what it's done. At the moment, it hasn't done anything. So that's try intersection, union and difference. Well, you can see it's not working. So we've added the modifier to the wrong one. How do we resolve that? Well, we just delete it with this cross remove modifier on the right hand side here. Let's bring back the visibility of that sketch. Click on the bracket. You can see we've got a Boolean modifier there, which takes into account the other holes. So we just add another Boolean modifier to this one. Add modifier and we want Boolean. We'll pick the sketch, the sketch here. And we want the difference that's come up to this sketch and hide it. And now we've got the holes that we need. We haven't added the construction geometry to this and set this, but we get the idea. So now what we've done is actually created the bracket that we want. Come up to here, we can see we've got the brackets, sketches, and the modifiers within. At any time, I can come back to the bracket. We can edit this sketch, which is on this side, this bracket here. Let's show that sketch. You can see that sketch there. Let's come around. And we can change this. So I'm editing that sketch now. 
Let's come down and you see all the dimensions and constraints are hidden, that show all. So we can see all those there. And that's set this distance to say 30. Hit enter. Let's extend that out there. Come up, leave the bracket sketch, and that has modified our bracket and extended that outwards. So that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll learn how to export models such as this and what you need to do to allow for that to be successful, but still be able to keep the modifiers intact so we can edit it later. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope to see you in the new one. If you're enjoying these videos and you would like to support the channel, then you can do so via my Ko-Fi page. That's at ko-fi.com forward slash MJ3D Studio. Any donations will be used to help to span the channel. I'd like to thank you all for watching and I hope to see you again soon.